Chapter 6, A Good Hider. When you're the last one in line, nobody watches you. That's how come nobody saw me when I made the teacher's ass get hit. I'm a good hider. One time at Grandma Miller's house, I hid under the kitchen sink. That made a growly sound. I spun out her. I'm not allowed to do that anymore. Anyway, see, I squinched behind the teacher's desk for a while. Then I saw a hair place to hide. It's a big supply closet in the back of the room. I knew that there very fast. I squeezed onto the bottom shelf. I squeezed right on top of the construction paper. It was, it was uncomfortable. Except my head was so It's all bended like I do a somersault. I pulled it, or mostly closed. Don't shut it all the way, though. And I mean it, I said out loud. I stayed quiet for lots of minutes. Then I heard noises in the hall. Somebody came running into a big deal scene, I think. What happened? I heard someone ask. Well, one of my little girls is lost, said the voice to sound like Mrs. Her name is Jane B. Jane. She didn't get on the bus, so go looking for her. Then you heard some keys jingle, and you get in the door shut. I didn't come out of the closet, though. When you're a good hider, you can't come out for a very, very long time. I just opened it up, and I. I always have a story. I got a story. To Told him inside my head is called the Little Red Hiding Girl. I made it up. This is how it went. Once upon a time, there was a little hiding girl. Well, no, and she was a. Well, where nobody could find her, except her head was very tight. Her head was cushioned out. But she still couldn't come out of her spot, or a smelly yellow monster would get her, and also some meanies of chocolate milk. Yeah, and after that, I rolled my eyes. First thing you realize, my grandma does when you eat after dinner, and he snores. And grandma almost said, Go to bed, Frank. Not the same thing as a nap, though. Snaps are for babies, that's why. Yeah, I didn't, so I just ate a little drool. And finally, uh, I heard that everything, they woke up. They came out of the closet and ran right to the window. Guess what? There weren't any cars in the parking lot. And there's was telling me about zero. Ooh, that was a relief, I said. I really hope it doesn't feel squeezy anymore. After I went to the clerk to closet, when I was hiding, I snipped that smell of clay. That's why I glazed everything in the whole world. Hey, I saw see it up there, I said. The clay was on the middle shelf, so I had a chair to get it. It was blue and stiff, and so I had to roll it on the floor and soft it, make it soft and warm. It went to a blue orange. It was there, you know, it had some dirt and hair on it. After I was done, I went to the front of my room on the teacher's big chair. I like teachers. That's very much. The orange was so big I could fit in one, I think. I you know, stepped out the top one. They have these stickers, some rubber bands, and glass uh, gold stars, which I love very lot. I went on my forehead. I had paper clips and red mark marking pens. And new pencils with no points and scissors and and all issues. And guess what else? Chalker said, Brand new chalker's not even, not even out of its little box yet. I stepped the teacher's chair and clapped my hands to get really loud. I went, Whenever I find a chair and sit down, say, We're going to learn the alphabet and some reading. And also, I'll teach you how to make a blue orange. But first, everyone has to watch me draw stuff. I went to the board and drew a brand new chalk. I drew a bean and a carrot. The curly hair, Jay. Or wrote some out. Hey, wait, wait, wait. That's it. I'm out. Thank you very much, though. And y'all go out for recess. I smiled. Except for not that gym.